Terrain Generation. Last time we worked on the lighting and made this. Since then I added these functions to make it easier to change the uniforms. I also removed the light block and made the light come from one direction. Now our job is to turn this one block into a beautiful terrain. And we start off with chunks. As we all know, the Minecraft world is divided into chunks. So we're gonna make our own chunks. The only difference is that our chunks will be cubes instead of uh, tall cubes, 3D rectangles. You get the idea. We only have one block for now, two if you count air as a block. So we're gonna store the chunk as a 3D array of bullions. And here's our chunk. Kinda looks like a stack of burgers and lettuce. Let's make it interesting and put some holes in our chunk. And now our stack turned into a moldy meatball. You can even move inside of it like a mouse and cheese. Enough with the food jokes. The next thing on our list is the world. Same logic here. We store the world as a 3D array of chunks. And to change the blocks, I had to write 6 nested for loops. But for some reason, we're still seeing one chunk just with fewer holes than before. It's probably because some handsome looking guy forgot to move the chunks. There we go. By the way, if you go far enough, you'll start seeing the limits of our projection matrix. Let me increase the world size for you. Now you can see it more clearly. Our world is getting bigger and slower. Just like your mom. Alright, let's generate our first terrain by sending a random height for each cell. Um, I feel like I did something wrong. Okay, so my problem was I was generating random terrain for each chunk instead of the whole world. In other words, I was focusing on little things instead of looking at the bigger picture. I fixed it by adding this function. It takes the world coordinates, finds the chunk it belongs to, and calculates the coordinates relative to that chunk. And here's our random terrain. This looks a lot like a city. Wait, hold on, let me try something. Yo, why am I making Minecraft when I could be making Spider-Man instead? To prevent our game from lagging, let's introduce the render distance. We start from the chunk the player is currently standing at. Then, based on the radius, we'll draw chunks surrounding our initial chunk. Since our chunks are cubes, this leads to some weird things like this. Anyway, to experiment with this, I tried to increase the world size even further. But C++ decided I was having too much fun, so it gave me this. What am I supposed to do with this? The output wasn't giving me anything other than warnings. I tried using the old method of printing stuff on the console, but C++ refused to say anything. The only thing I had was this number, which got me absolutely nowhere. In moments like these, I tend to get lazy and start procrastinating. But thanks to our today's sponsor Skillshare, my productivity has skyrocketed. You see, Skillshare is the largest online learning community that can help you learn new skills or improve the existing ones. They have a huge variety of classes in categories like productivity, marketing, or development. But I don't know where to start. That's why there are things called learning paths. These are collections of hand-picked classes that make it easier for you to learn a certain skill. My personal favorite teacher is Ali Abdal. His class called Productivity for Creators really helped me to start uploading videos more frequently. You probably noticed it too. And they also added this new topic called AI and Innovation. As a person who's interested in AI, I love it. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a 1 month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today. So after hours of suffering, I finally figured out the problem. It turns out trying to store 2 million blocks in a 6 dimensional array leads to stack overflow. And ironically stack overflow couldn't help me. I fixed it by using vectors instead of arrays. I also decided to use a 1 dimensional vector instead of 3. This meant I also had to write functions that convert coordinates to indexes. And now our game finally works. But even with the render distance it's lagging a lot. So to further optimize the game, I made a rule that if the block is surrounded by other blocks, it won't be drawn. This made the game a lot faster. Also if you decide to go inside, you'll see this beautiful hollow world. Now our terrain is huge, ugly and empty on the inside. Kinda reminds me of your mom. I created a separate project for generating terrain in 2D. This will make it easier for us to experiment and understand how they work. Also some people kept asking me about SFML so if you're one of them, this is for you. Right now our terrain looks like this. Doesn't look that exciting. For generating pretty mountains and hills, we need a noise function. Basically speaking, a noise function generates smooth randomness. And if we give it a point, it returns the noise value on that point. 
most people would suggest using the Perlin noise, but I decided to try a different approach. He just couldn't manage to make it work. Okay, here's the plan. We're gonna generate a bunch of random terrains. Each one of them will have a different cell size. They're called octaves, by the way. We'll combine these octaves together to come up with a perfect terrain. At least that's the theory. Let's see it in practice. Here it is. Now you see, this is not a bug. The artist was clearly trying to express their deep feelings and desire. Apart from having different cell sizes, they also need to have different amplitudes. The smaller the cell, the smaller the amplitude. I also forgot to mention that we're using powers of 2 for everything. Alright, here's one octave, two octaves, three, four, five, six, seven. And we have our terrain. This looks okay, but I'm really curious how it'll look in the game. Damn. This looks way better than our city-like terrain. Now we just need to get rid of things like these. To make our terrain smoother, we're gonna use bilinear interpolation. Let's take these four cells on our map. First we calculate the linear interpolation between the top cells and the bottom cells. Once we end up with this vertical gradient, we use the lerp function again for each row. Here's the comparison between no interpolation and bilinear interpolation. And as a result, our terrain looks a lot smoother. But you may ask, would it look good in Minecraft? And my answer is... Of course it will, what the hell are you talking about? Before we go any further, let's try adding the third dimension to our noise. I feel like I'm slowly turning into an Italian cook here. Damn! This is perfect for cave generation. Now for most people this would be enough, but not for us. You see, if we increase the contrast of our current terrain, we can notice some patterns. Clearly using the linear interpolation is not enough to get rid of them. So I came up with this smooth transition by combining two parabolas. This looks way better than the previous one. Before seeing our final terrain, let's add some colors to it. And here's the result. So good. Let's try another one. There. One more. Okay, let's move on. Now for Minecraft, we're gonna add different blocks instead of colors. Let's also increase the world size for better results. Now grab some popcorn and enjoy the show. In theory, we can generate worlds that are infinite since our noise function doesn't have a limit. I would love to show you the 3D noise version of this, but it's gonna take hours to generate. Big thanks to these amazing people who supported me on Patreon. Especially Adam Kanzler, Kartoffelbauer1000, and Wayne Rasmussen. Don't forget to join our Discord server, and be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.